How extreme is this book? I will say right out of the gate, Gone to See the River Man was far better than this piece of crap. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. As you may remember, I just reviewed 11-22-63, a big chunker of a book by Stephen King, a much beloved book by Stephen King. So be careful what you say about that one. But I did my review, and after reading that, I thought, I want to try something a little thinner and a whole lot different than this epic sci-fi alternate history novel. <clears throat> and I also wanted to try my first stab at extreme horror. All the kids are reading extreme horror. You may have seen them bouncing around Facebook groups like Books of Horror, where they are just these vile dirty, much-treasured books of gore, filth, and whatever other extreme descriptions you can muster up. <clears throat> and I, I have to admit, the lure is pretty interesting for these books. I often see the descriptions, and I'm like, eh, that might not be too bad. Do I have the stomach for it? Because I'm somebody where I am easily affected by what I call brain poison takes a while for those thoughts and images to work their way through my brain. And so for a while you feel a little under a spell of something you'd rather forget. So uh, a friend of mine sent me this book, Gone to See the River Man. And I did ask around and, and it is considered extreme horror. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to jump right into something uh, right after 11 63 And I want it to be as different as possible. And certainly this book was. In my brain, extreme horror is torture, gore, disgusting stuff. But if you look at the description, that just covers splatterpunk. If you look at the definitions. What makes something extreme horror is a social taboo that goes beyond gore or disgusting, gag, reflex-inducing imagery. And by that measure, I'd, I'd say, yes, this qualifies as extreme horror. So how was my first experience in this dirty, filthy little pool? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it was really interesting. First of all, the book, let me talk about the book. The book is about a woman who befriends, becomes pen pals with a sadistic serial killer who's currently incarcerated in what I can only assume is a maximum security facility. The guy has no hope of ever getting out. And she strikes up this relationship with him and tells herself it's because she's interested in true crime. Maybe she wants to have a true crime podcast. Maybe it's for all these sort of other intellectual pursuits. But as the book goes on, you realize there's more to it than that. There are these other horror groupies that are... Also pen pals with this serial killer and she's trying to one-up them to prove her devotion to this guy. So he'll give her the real story behind why he did such awful, awful things. And that's the setup. And it's excellent. And you're, I, I really did feel at the beginning of this story, I was in danger. It was, it was tangible. You felt the tension. You felt that this woman was entering into the wolf's den and it wasn't going to end well. And this was going to be a no holds barred descent into butchery. That's the vibe you get. And it, of course, I'm thinking extreme horror. So it's going to get bad very, very soon. Well, it didn't. In order to prove her devotion to the serial killer, he gives her a task to complete. And she thinks if she does this one thing for him, it'll remove all doubt that she's number one. She beats all these other horror groupies out of contention and she will take her place right next to this monster as his uh, confidant, maybe girlfriend, maybe wife, lover, whatever it is. It, it's kind of fuzzy uh, as the story goes along, what she wants to be to this guy. And he gives her a quest, and that is to go see the river man. Gone to see the river man. 
and he's still incarcerated, so he gives her this quest in the letters. And at some points, I did wonder if Christopher Triana did research into correspondence with inmates. Because it did make me wonder, would prison guards and officials allow a prisoner to communicate these demands to uh, a civilian? Would they allow that communication? Because it entailed things that the serial killer, Edmund, thought the authorities didn't know about. So I would think they would be very curious to know uh, about what he was detailing in the letter. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I was in the story. I was allowing the story to be the authority in the events that followed. So the premise is she gets this quest from her serial killer boyfriend, pen pal, and she sets off to fulfill the quest, but she needs to bring her disabled sister with her. And that adds a level of complexity to this simple mission that she would have rather have gone around, but it, it just wasn't gonna turn out that way. And so as she goes off onto this quest, we learn more about her and her family and her past. And what we learn is truly disturbing. I think the extreme horror element of this book, the most disgusting, horrible things that happen, have nothing to do with blood and gore and murder. All the trauma in this book is psychological. Well, the vast majority. I mean, obviously, there is a serial killer involved. There is a river man. There are things that happen that aren't just psychological. But most of the repulsive stuff about this book is psychological trauma and horror. And it's pretty disgusting. And... Through that process, we're, we're going on this journey that's in the present, but we're also reflecting on the past. We get to learn a lot about the main character, Lori, and her sister, Abby, and the family they came from. And it does flavor the thrust of the book. So at, at the very outset, you're really thinking about Lori and Edmund. But then as it goes along, you're thinking more about Lori and her, her family. So in a very thin book, it kind of loses its focus. It loses its way a little bit. We're still on the quest. We're still on the mission. But our, our brain is kind of now pulled in this new direction over what Lori's childhood included and what her teenage years involved. And that stuff's pretty nasty. And the effect it has, not only does it pull our attention to the past, but it also dilutes our investment in her as a character in the present when she's on this quest. And it feels at some point there are many, many strands that get distracting. And I, by the time we get to the end of the book and the finale, the horrors in the book felt to me like cardboard cutout horrors. It felt like I was on that haunted mansion ride at Disney World with with the ghosts by me and they're telling and you know I'm in the in the chair and they're saying, "Ooh, look at that. It's scary. Oh, look at them dancing over there. Oh, that's all very scary." But you feel like a spectator. You don't feel that danger that was in the very beginning of the book and you felt like you were being told what you should be scared about instead of actually feeling terror or fear. So in that regard, it was a bit of a letdown. It started out like a five-star read. It really did. It was, it was, it was excellent. And then it just, by the end, I'd have to end with this book as a three-star read. Most of that is missed opportunity. I don't, I, 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 I didn't write the book and I, I'm not doing a workshop here. I don't know what Christopher Triana could have done differently. I have some ideas, but that doesn't even matter. But most of it was to keep the reader tense. And and, and at some point, I became decoupled from it. I don't know how. And I, I think maybe it was a lack of sympathy for the main character. And, and therefore, a lack of investment in her safety. But Christopher Triana is a very good writer. 
And it's not just a description of things that happen. He, he, he does a great job of, of making you feel in the moment and connecting with the characters on a personal level. And I would be very happy to read more from him. In fact, I have A Cold Place for Dying on my bookshelf. So that's another book I have of his. And I'm excited to read it. Um, three stars aren't bad from me, I think. And, and considering it started out in such a great place, it gives me a lot of hope that, uh, or a lot of trust that a future book I read from Christopher Triana will be good. So a good start. I just wish it, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I wish. It doesn't even matter because this thing is printed. It's in the world. It's a, it's a printed baby. So whatever I want the book to have done, it didn't do. So what's the point, right? What's the point? But it is a fun read. I would recommend it. It was a quick read. Though I don't feel I've been properly introduced to extreme horror. I don't know. I expected more brain poison. And in order to have brain poison, you need to be shook. Now, I was re repulsed by the events in the book and gut punched by some of them. Sure. It's kind of caught me off guard. But definitely not that lingering brain poison. For example, I read the plot synopsis for a Serbian film. I never saw the movie. I will never see the movie. But I went to the Wikipedia page for a Serbian film and I just read the plot. It tells you everything that happens in the movie. And I was sick for days. That, to me, was more extreme horror than Gone to See the River Man. And so that's what I expect after reading an extreme horror book is to be slightly traumatized. Not that I want that. Nobody wants that. But having the ability to say it was just a book, it's just fiction, is it'll go away. The brain poison will go away. I will say there is one thing that stuck with me out of this book that I thought was just nasty. And that is the, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's the description of a certain character's hands. Uh, seriously. <laughs> oh, man. That was just the worst. And, oh, that was brilliant, I will say. If anything's brain poison, that's still in there. It's still rattling around in here. Um, but good book, a lot of fun, three stars. And uh, I hope to read more. If you have any suggestions for extreme horror that gets that brain poison quality, drop it in the comments. I'll be happy to entertain those ideas. I mean, there are more than a few titles out there that I've been eyeballing um, that I might try at a later date, at a later date. But for now, this one stands there. Three star read, tree or three, however you do it. And uh, go find your extreme horror, your happy horror, and uh, stay frosty. I think after reliving the events of this book and the, and the trauma that was the Serbian film, I'd just like to spend a moment here with Milo floating on some peaceful waves.